May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. It's unusual with the lectionary that all three lessons, I mean, the Gospel and the Old Testament lesson usually are pretty well linked, but usually the Epistle has its own thing to say. Today, all three lessons and the song, and if you want to take time at some point to read through Psalm 19 in its entirety, C.S. Lewis has said that it is the most profound poem in all of Christendom. So take time and look at it sometime. But all three lessons, Nehemiah's passage, Paul's wonderful statement about our diversity and unity, one of the most profound statements anywhere on that, and Jesus coming home. He's been baptized, he's been driven out into the wilderness, he's been tested and tried, and he comes home and he does what good Jewish boys do. He goes to synagogue on the Sabbath. And he's handed the scroll and he reads this fabulous passage from Isaiah, which in fact is, is his mission statement. It is what God has called him to do and what we as the body of Christ in the world today are called to do also. But Nehemiah, to put that in some context, writing some 500 years before the birth of Christ, the exile has happened, they've come back from the exile, and the remnant that is there have forgotten what it means to be the people of Israel. They've intermarried, they've forgotten the practices, they've worshipped other gods, things that we tend to do from time to time ourselves. And so the entire community is gathered together in front of the water gate. Now, most of us in here, if not all of us in here, know that 40 years ago that had tremendous political implications. It still does at our own time in different ways. But they are gathered. And one of the parts that's really important is that within Hebrew scripture, women are not often mentioned. And twice in this passage, women are mentioned. Men and women and those who can understand. And in other places, it reads children who can understand. So the entire community is brought back and gathered together and Nehemiah, who is the governor and is beginning to rebuild Jerusalem, and Ezra, who is the priest, begins to read from the Torah, the law that has been passed down from generation to generation. And they begin to realize where they have gone astray, and they return, and their first impulse is to do obeisance, bow down before God, and cry and moan. And Ezra and Nehemiah said, no, 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 no. This is a day to rejoice in because we've received this word yet again. It has come to us. It is new. It is renewing. And so go home and prepare and eat fat and sweet wine and give to the poor. Give to those who are less fortunate. Give to those some. Prepare extra for those who may not have any of this on their own. And so it is a day of rejoicing. And they are reminded that they are to rejoice in the word of God and to rejoice and understand that worship is a part of their tradition and to gather to do that. Then we hear, as I said, this wonderful, wonderfully read on my dad, passage from Paul that is just one of the most profound pieces of scripture in that it talks about the body of Christ as a human body and talks about honoring and respecting each part and that it reminds us that 
not everyone has the gift of prophecy or the gift of healing, but that every one of us has been given gifts by God. And that through our baptism, we have a responsibility to use those gifts in the church, for the church, for the building up of the body of Christ. And we are to respect one another. And we are not supposed to put anybody else's down. There was a movie back in the 80s, and most of you, I'm sure, have seen it. Elephant Man. It was a play on Broadway. And in that play, this young man was brought to be treated in London. And it had great actors. Anthony Hopkins, William Hart, uh, John Gilbert was in it. And at one point, one of the doctors teaches, or thinks he is teaching the elephant man some words. Well, the other doctor comes back from that experience and is not impressed. Or he's just parroting to you words that you've taught him. And then all of a sudden, they both hear him reciting the 23rd Psalm. And all of a sudden, that transforms the event. And they recognize that this is an intelligent human being. But how often through the history of our world have we made judgments about those who look different or act different or are different? And we discount them and push them to the side. <clears throat> Fortunately, at times we do it with women, we do it with children. We do it with those who are unable, and we forget that they have incredible gifts to offer if we would listen and open our eyes to perceive the possibilities inherent therein. But then we come to the Gospel, and Jesus has, as I said, been baptized, been driven out into the wilderness to be tempted and tried, and he comes back home, and there are reminiscent parts here of, you can't go home again, and you have to hear part two next Sunday, because it really is an entire passage. But he reads this passage from Isaiah. And it really does state his purpose, what he is to be about, the inclusion of those who have been cast out, the inclusion of those who have been put on the fringes of society. And he sits down and all the eyes are on him. And he says, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing today. What do we perceive? What do we see? What do we hear? The theme that runs through all of these passages this morning are really very simple. Listen to the Word of God. Hear the Word of God. Worship God. Care for yourself and care for one another. God, worship God, care for yourself, care for others. It's not rocket science. <laughs> but the reality is we move into our human condition and we start worrying about how it's done and whether they do it right or what's appropriate and what's inappropriate and we forget. We lose sight of the glory of God manifest in each and every one we encounter. Epiphany is a season of manifestation, of making known who this Jesus is. And each and every one of us, each and every one of us is called to show forth that glory in the world. 